and sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't. So it now says I'm live, so I will be starting again. So welcome to this English lesson on the topic of groceries. I know it's not the most exciting topic for all of you, um, but it's certainly um, a topic that I like a lot. Let me just double check to make sure things are working. It looks like things are working. Let me make sure I'm muted on that screen and let me get back to the screen I like to look at. Anyways, welcome to this lesson on groceries. I know I've said that five times now. It's really good to see all of you here. I wanna thank Todd and Dave for being here in the chat. I wanna give a shout out to uh, Brent from American English with this guy who is in the chat and also Sean from Free99 English is in the chat as well. It's always nice to have a couple of English teachers here to kind of help out um, as I'm doing this live stream. I'm just gonna do an audio check for a second. Sounds like everything is working. You can see from the picture over there that we're going to be talking about some kind of food again. So some of you might get really, really hungry. Uh, before I start on the lesson though, I do wanna say we will have a guest coming in via Zoom in about 10 minutes. I'm not gonna tell you who it is, but we do have a guest who is going to pop into the live stream. Um, just to kind of talk a little bit, not just about groceries, but about something that he has planned for later this morning or this evening or this afternoon, depending on where you are. A few rules before we start. Uh, please keep the chat English only. Um, please use the link that Todd and Dave share in the chat to ask questions. And please make sure your questions are always on the topic. So please only today ask questions about the lesson, which is groceries. Um, tomorrow I will have a question and answer live stream um, where you can ask questions on any topic. So, but anyways, let's get started uh, on this uh, English lesson. Uh, first slide I have is grocery store or supermarket. So I did do a video a while ago at the grocery store. This lesson covers a few of the same topics, but not all of them. This is a more detailed lesson. Um, and I started that lesson as well, I think by saying in Canada, at least, when we go to buy food, we go to the grocery store or we go to the supermarket. Um, I usually call it the grocery store. Um, I know that in French, it's called the supermarché, which is the equivalent of supermarket. Um, but generally, I call it the grocery store, okay? Um, that's the word that I use when I need to go and buy some food for my family. Um, and we have a larger kind of grocery store here. And I don't know the exact word, because we just call it by its name, um, but we have what are called warehouse clubs uh, or wholesale clubs, where you pay a membership fee every year, usually about $100, and then you can go and buy groceries at a much larger store that is actually designed uh, a little more to look like a warehouse. So it's this gigantic building um, where they have bigger boxes, bigger cans, and bigger portions of food that you can buy when you are buying your groceries. The two most popular ones in North America are Costco and Sam's Club. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, so Costco is the one closest to me. You can even see, I'm pretty sure it says Costco Wholesale or something like that. I don't have, let me check with my glasses for a sec here. Yeah, maybe it says that, I can't actually tell. But those are the two that are the biggest ones in North America. Sam's Club is fairly popular in the US. Maybe Brent can let us know in the chat um, what type of wholesale club or wholesale store um, he goes to if he has a membership. Um, and when you go grocery shopping, we simply call it grocery shopping, okay? Um, so grocery shopping is the term for going to get groceries um, as opposed to normal shopping, I guess. So when you say that you need to go shopping People think you're going to the mall to buy clothes and shoes and those kinds of things. But if you specifically say grocery shopping, they know that you are going to the grocery store or the supermarket. Um, before you go, it's important that you make a list. <laughs> and we would call this a grocery list or a shopping list. I would definitely call it a grocery list, okay? Um, the term that I use is, oh, Jen, I gotta make a grocery list. Um, we need some things. I don't know everything we need, but let's make a list and then let's go to the store um, and get what we need. So uh, you might call it a shopping list as well, but generally I would call it a grocery list. And then here are just all of the phrases I personally use um, when I need to get groceries. Let me do an audio check. 
Yeah, sounds great. Um, so I will say to Jen, hey, I need to get groceries. I need to get some groceries. I need to go grab some groceries. I need to grab some groceries. I need to run to the grocery store. In English, we run everywhere. Like I need to run to the hardware store. I need to run to the grocery store. I need to run out and get a few things. Uh, but we don't actually run when we do it. We, we usually just walk. Um, or I need to do some grocery shopping. We use the verb do a lot and I have to apologize a bit. Um, sometimes we use the verb do in weird situations, but I would say that. I would say if I was at work, I might call Jen and say, hey, um, I'll be home a bit late. I need to do some grocery shopping before I come home. So those are all of your phrases and there's probably more than that as well. Um, so when you get to the grocery store, you can grab a basket that you can carry. Um, I don't have a picture of that here, um, but you can also grab a grocery cart or a shopping cart or just a cart. And I think in Britain, they call it a trolley. So I put the word trolley on there. Um, and there are a whole bunch of different kinds as well. Um, so I just want to say, uh, I see one person in the chat saying that my voice is not loud enough. I am not experiencing that here. Um, if anyone else in the chat, maybe Brent or Sean or Todd or Dave could let me know. To me, the audio seems great. So hopefully that's what everyone else is experiencing. Um, but I do want to say hi to, in the chat to everyone who is here. Thank you so much. 349 people watching. That is very awesome of you. Um, but let's keep moving along with the lesson and I'll take a few questions in just a minute. Um, in the grocery store, there are two different ways to refer to the places where you get food. There are aisles. And if you look at the spelling of the word aisle, it doesn't look the way it sounds, um, but you would need to go down aisles, okay? Um, yeah, so I see people saying I need to turn up my volume, but you know, I am really not experiencing that. Um, yeah, Brent says his is at half volume and sounds fine. So. It may just be where you are in the world, so sorry. Anyways, there are aisles, so you go down certain aisles to get different kinds of food, and there are areas or sections, okay? So in the grocery store, you might go to the um, bakery aisle, if it's in an aisle, or the bakery section, or the bakery area, if it's a, just a general area. So it kind of depends. If it is a long, narrow um, alley, we would call it the aisle. So you go up and down the aisles in the grocery store. Uh, and then if it is just a larger space, you would call it an area. So those are the two parts of the grocery store. Um, and it's important to know that uh, because in a minute, we're going to go through all of the different kinds of sections. But right now I'm going to take some questions. Let me jump over to the questions. Um, I'll do questions for about two or three minutes. Uh, and then I will uh, bring our guest in via Zoom. He's actually right there on my other screen right now. You just can't see him. Um, but let me find my questions here. Um, I just have to get the first one ready and lined up. Give me a moment uh, to do that. And here's our first question. Salah Abid, what is the difference between a grocery, supermarket, and store? If I have a small shop of 30 square meters and have one seller, what should I call it? So... Generally in my part of Canada, if you go to a regular size place to buy groceries, we would call it a grocery store. We might call it a food mart. We might call it a, um, a supermarket. Um, but if you'd go to one small place to buy a certain kind of food, we might just call it a shop, okay? So if someone, let's say, sells organic food and they have a small store, we might call it an, an organic food store, or we might call it a small shop. But generally, um, the larger places we would call a grocery store, and the smaller places we might call a store or a shop. Um, let's see. Next question is from Jan, John Chan. Jan. I want to say Jan because in Dutch, J-A-N would be Jan, but Jan Chan. Hi, Bob. Can you buy the food from the supermarket every single day during the lockdown period? Thanks. Yes, we are in phase two, almost in phase three. I, I thought we were in phase three, but we're not quite yet. Um, grocery stores have been open during every phase. Although in phase one, older people over the age of 60 could shop from seven to eight in the morning, and then younger people could shop the rest of the day. So there was a little bit of a difference uh, in their terms of timing. 
Let's see here. Uh, Modine says, hi, Mr. Bob. I know this may be an outlandish question. Have you ever made any sacrifices to lower your grocery bill? Some people tend to stockpile. Where do you stand on this? So I'll tell you this. When I was young, I lived in Quebec for a year uh, and I didn't have a lot of money. So I ate oatmeal once for a whole week. Oatmeal is one of the cheapest foods that you can buy. Now, I did work in a restaurant. And I did get a free meal at the restaurant during my shift. I worked the night shift. Uh, but the rest of the week, because I had no money, I ate oatmeal uh, every day. I just had a gigantic bowl of oatmeal and I put a little bit of butter in the oatmeal. It was actually margarine because margarine is cheaper. Um, and that was it. Uh, I ate oatmeal for a week. But then my paycheck came uh, and I was able to afford some food. Uh, let's see here. Let me do one more question. Um... Oh, this is a good one from Katerina. Hi, Bob. Do many people in Canada do eco-friendly grocery shopping? Does your family sort out the trash? So yes, we do. So one thing we do is we do not use plastic grocery bags. As a family, we have reusable grocery bags. And I will talk about that later in the lesson. Um, and another thing we do is we recycle. So in Canada, you can put out garbage. You can put out compost and you can put out recycling, at least in my part of Canada. Um, but uh, certainly we do things as eco-friendly as possible. Um, I wanna back up though, because there was a question about stockpiling. Um, yeah, we didn't stockpile anything. Um, we aren't some, we aren't people who would go out and do that. We weren't too worried because in Canada, the, um, the grocery system is um, very, um, let me see, reliable is what I would say. Hey, so we have a guest here today. So just give me a second here. I got to plug in my earbud uh, and I need to unmute my desktop audio and I need to click right here. And you should be seeing Sean on your screen. Hi, Sean. Hey, Bob, how are you doing? Uh, not too bad. How are you? Hey, Sean, uh, <laughs> how often do you, oh, I should just say hi uh, and, and maybe greet you a bit. See, Sean and I talked earlier already. So, but I should go through the pleasantries at least. How are you mm. today? I'm pretty good. Yes. Um, did you get up pretty early this morning? I did. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. kids had uh, gymnastics to go to. So you had to do some of that dad stuff where you drive around and drop them off someplace. Yeah. 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 The family stuff. Yeah. Hey, Sean, um, how often do you get groceries as a family? Like, is it a weekly thing or? Uh, <laughs> my wife um, likes to uh, have fresh food all the time and we don't really freeze anything. So we go almost every other day. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just made sure the audio is working. Um, and how many people are you feeding in your house? How many are you? Uh, th three kids and me and my wife. So yeah. five total. So it's a lot of money every month. <laughs> yes. That's one thing about Canada is um, sometimes people think it's a great place to live and it is, but groceries are not cheap in Canada. It is an expensive no. place to live uh, when you need to buy food. Um, one of the reasons being a lot of our food comes from the Southern United States and California. Uh, and then a lot of our fruits and vegetables in the winter come from pretty far away, um, Costa Rica and mm -hmm. other countries as well. Um, so, right. Sean, you want to talk about what you're doing after this live stream a little bit later this morning? Yeah. So um, after this live stream, um, you and I are going to go on to my channel and we're going to do a live stream and we're going to play Kahoot. Uh, there's been a, uh, a couple people in your chat asking when we're going to play Kahoot again. So uh, it's just a quiz game. Uh, we're go I'm going to do a quiz on what you're teaching now. Uh, it's only 11 questions, I think. Okay. Um, so it's pretty, pretty short for what I usually do. Most of the time it's, um, uh, 30, 30 to 35 questions. So, um, I don't think I mentioned this to you before, but, um, maybe about a year ago before I started following you, I used to work for Loblaw. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, uh, so I know all about so people the, know what is Loblaws? Uh, Loblaw is the largest employer in Canada and, uh, they, uh, it's a grocery chain, basically. Right. Yeah. Very so, cool. Superstores. Yeah. Um, well, I'm looking forward to that. So for those of you that uh, have some time later this morning, um, we're going to finish this live stream up at the normal time. Uh, and then it will take a bit um, to get set up. Um, but if you jump over to Sean's channel, uh, you'll see a notification there when he goes live. And I'll be on his live stream this morning as well. Um, Sean and I have been meeting a couple times a week to get this working and hopefully it's all working <laughs> great for you. I, 
part of one of the things I wanted to do with all of the equipment changes was to be able to bring guests onto the live stream. So, um, Sean, I'm going to let you go because I know you want to maybe get some stuff ready. I'm going to finish the lesson. Thank you so much. Uh, Sean right. is going to pop in uh, just towards the end of this live stream again. He'll pop in and we'll kind of remind you guys what we're doing. But uh, thanks, Sean. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Yeah, see you in a bit. See ya. So we're going to get back to the lesson. Let me mute my desktop audio. I hope that you guys are excited knowing that, uh, first of all, I can have guests on my live stream. And second of all, um, there will be a little bit of a Kahoot quiz later. If you don't know what that is, join and you will see. But we're going to talk a little bit about the different areas of the grocery store. So um, let's see here. Um, the first section that you walk into in my grocery store is the produce section. But we also say the produce section. So there's two ways that I pronounce it. The produce section has fruits and vegetables. The produce section has fruits and vegetables. So it's kind of a weird thing. Um, I'm not sure why there are two pronunciations. Sometimes we have words where we pronounce it the English way as if we're from Britain or the American way as if we're from the United States because we borrow from both of those versions of English. So produce section or produce section um oh and there's another way there's produce produce and produce you can pronounce this word three ways so here we go a farm that grows bananas which is produce produces the bananas so they produce produce or they produce produce sorry i'm just confusing you now i'm going to move on you can rewatch that part uh, later if you want to get a sense of how crazy the english language is um, there are large frozen food sections in our grocery stores in North America. Um, one of the reasons is because uh, we need to freeze food um, because we don't produce food year round in our northern climates. So it's important in the summer that we harvest and freeze beans and peas so that we can eat them in the winter. Um, but we also have frozen food sections because people like frozen food because it is convenient. So you can buy frozen dinners, frozen pizza, and all kinds of things that are really quick and easy to make at home, but I don't think they're very healthy. Um, we don't buy a lot of frozen food. Um, we do buy ice cream and we do buy frozen pizzas once in a while because they go on sale and then they are super, super cheap. Um, there's a bakery section, which is different than the baking section. So the bakery section is where you can buy bread and other fresh made um, uh, baked products. So often in a grocery store, they will have a bakery right in the grocery store. Um, and there is a deli section where you can buy meats. Sorry, I'm going a little quickly on this section, but I do have a video. Uh, maybe Dave or Todd can dig it up and link to it, but I do have a video where I teach all this at a grocery store. That's a lot more fun to watch. Um, there is usually an organic food section and also a health food section. There's usually a dairy section where you can buy milk and cheese and yogurt. Uh, you can usually also buy, um, let me see what else is in. Oh, eggs, I think are in the dairy section. Um, and even orange juice in our store is in the dairy section. It's kind of a funny place to put it. Um, uh, Madi says that, oh, love the bakery section. Yes, the bakery section smells really good in our grocery store. I love it as well. Um, there is usually an ethnic or imported food section. Sorry, I have a I have short hair, but I have a hair in my eyes. So um, so I like this section in our grocery store because my family, my parents came from Holland uh, and they actually have Dutch food in our grocery store, but they also have food from India. Uh, they have food from uh, uh, all over the world. So if you like certain kinds of ethnic or imported foods, you can find them there. This is the pancake mix that we sometimes buy because it makes uh, more of a European style of pancake. There are canned food. There is a canned food section. So again, let me back up. You can add the word aisle to almost all of these. So there might be an organic food aisle, a dairy aisle or a dairy section, an ethnic food or imported food aisle, canned food aisle. So canned food again is gonna be any food that is in cans. Here you can find things like baked beans or tuna um, or spaghetti sauce. There are lots of things that you can buy in cans. Um, yeah, a lot of people asking for it to be louder, but I wonder if it's just happening in different parts of the world. Um, would you turn up the volume? I have to be honest, when I do an audio check, 
like my audio on my test thing is at halfway and it sounds great. So I think it's a YouTube problem. I don't think it's me. So sorry about that. Um, by the way, I am recording this and there will be a shorter version that I will put up tomorrow morning or Sunday morning and that will have really good audio. Um, so there is a baking aisle as well. So the bakery section or the bakery area has things that are made to eat. The baking area has what you would buy to bake things. So it has flour and sugar uh, and all of those kinds of things. So the baking aisle is different from the bakery section, just so you know. Um, let's see here. Um, go to the next one. There is what we would call dry goods, but I don't call it dry goods. Uh, this is an older word, um, but dry goods are things like pasta and those types of things. So there is a dry goods aisle. Um, in our store, I think it's just called the pasta aisle because there is a lot of pasta uh, in that aisle. Brent is saying that audio is fine for him. So it must be a YouTube problem. So sorry about that for those of you that are having a little trouble hearing. Um, and another person, Socorro, is saying the audio is fine. And same with Baran is saying, I think the audio is coming good. So sorry if a few of you are somewhere where you're having a little bit of a problem. Um, hey, I'm going to move to questions again. This is the last question. Let me pull up the next one. And I'll do a few questions and then we will move on. Nathan GR says, hello, teacher Bob. How are you? I'm good, Nathan. Thank you for asking. When you go in a grocery store, do you need to insert a coin into your cart in order to get the cart? Thank you. So at the grocery store that I go to regularly, you don't need to. There is a grocery store in another town though, where you have to actually put a quarter in in order to get the cart. And then you can bring the grocery cart back when you're done and you reconnect it and then the quarter pops out. Um, so it's just a way to make sure people bring their carts back. So where I go, you don't need to do that. Um, but I have been to stores where they have that. Um, Next question is from Diego from Argentina. Hi, Bob. Morning. What's the difference between Canadian grocery stores and American or USA grocery stores? Oh, except, for, yeah, I'm not going to read that out loud because my video will get demonetized. Um, but yes, uh, American stores uh, sometimes have more things, but it really depends where you go in the United States. Um, for me, having lived in both Michigan and Ontario, um, grocery stores were almost identical. There was very little difference, um, except one small difference. And that is in the American stores, some are allowed to sell beer and wine and liquor or spirits. Uh, in my part of Ontario, that was illegal until about a year or two ago. Now, some grocery stores here uh, do have beer and wine, but uh, up till about a year or two ago, you could not you could not buy beer or wine at the grocery store but in america there are many grocery stores uh, where you can uh ruslan has the next question hello teacher bob how are you i hope you are doing well is it popular in canada to produce and sell organic food it's becoming a trend nowadays around the world so almost every canadian grocery store will have an organic food section um, it's very common uh, to be able to buy organic food at the grocery store. And also, um, a lot of people will go to their local farmer's market to buy organic food. Um, a farmer's market is a place where farmers come and sometimes they close the street or they go to the city square and the farmers sell their food directly uh, to customers. So yes, you definitely can. Uh, we do produce organic food and you can buy organic food. Um, let's see here. Uh, Rod VIP, what's the meaning of the word pastry, like in pastry shop? Thank you in advance. Well, when you buy a pastry, um, it's a very yummy delicacy. It's kind of a dessert or a snack. A pastry would be something like a croissant with chocolate drizzled on top of it. Um, pastries are all of those things that we bake, um, not necessarily cookies or donuts, but all of the more fancy things. So things like eclairs, chocolate eclairs, um, and then croissants, and I can't think of all the words, maybe butter tarts, but things that are super yummy and super tasty. Let me do one more question and we will get back. Ashraf Hussein says, hypermarket and supermarket, what's the difference? So we do not have hypermarkets here. Um, we don't use that word, but I am familiar with it. 
Um, we do have supermarkets and then we do have super stores. So that is another term we use. Um, when a store starts to sell more than just groceries, we refer to it as a superstore. Um, we also just call it Walmart because that's the biggest one here is Walmart. But when a store sells groceries and then they have toys and clothing and hardware as well, it we would call it, um, I would call it a superstore or I would just call it Walmart because we don't have a lot of other superstores besides Walmart. But I am familiar with the term hypermarket. Uh, let's get back to the lesson. We were in the dry goods aisle. Remember, aisle, A-I-S-L-E-S, -E very weird spelling. Um, there is sometimes a bulk food section or a bulk food aisle. So in the bulk food aisle, um, they just have bins of food. Let me make this bigger. Um, and then you get a container or a bag and you simply fill it and then you pay by weight. So you weigh the food that you are buying. You can see here um, that they have um, all these different things. You can buy cereal, you can buy flour, you can buy sugar, you can buy candies in the bulk food area. There's a lot. <laughs> Brent says Super Walmart and Super Tar Target. Um, they're gigantic stores where anything you want to buy, you can probably find. Um, there's a snack aisle. Um, I should make this one bigger so everyone gets really hungry. In the snack aisle, you can find chips, pretzels, um, all kinds of things. Um, salsa in a jar, which probably isn't the greatest way to buy salsa, but that's how we buy salsa. Um, there is also a cereal aisle. Um, let me just check something for a sec. I just have a little bit. Um, let me see here. What was I looking for? Sorry, folks. I know this is a bit of a delay. I just want to see. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Sorry, I just wanted to see how far along I was. There's a cereal aisle. We eat a lot of breakfast cereal in North America. So sometimes there's almost an entire aisle with just breakfast cereal. Um, Cheerios, Corn Flakes, um, Rice Krispies. I, I can't name all of them. Um, mostly because we eat cereal for breakfast sometimes, but some people eat cereal as a snack. My son actually has a bowl of cereal every night. So very common snack in North America. There's usually a beverage aisle. So this is where you'll find your Coke or your Pepsi, um, all of your different carbonated beverages or soda or pop, whatever you call it, where you are from, if you are an English speaker. Um, by the way, when you buy something like Coke, it, you need to know what it's called depending on the area you are in, in North America. In my area, we call it pop. In Michigan, they called it soda. In Brent's area, I'm not sure if they call it soda or Coke in the United States and in Sean's area out in Eastern Canada. Um, I'm not sure if they call it pop or soda. Um, there are places where they just call everything Coke, uh, even if it's not Coke. So uh, you need to figure that out if you are in an English speaking country, what it is called. Um, so again, in some places you can find beer, wine or spirits or liquor. Spirits and liquor are the same thing. Um, and uh, in my grocery store, you cannot. You have to go to a different store uh, if you want to buy that. Um, and then usually a grocery store will have a section with household items. So household items are things like laundry detergent. So that's the soap that you use to wash your clothes. Um, they will have deodorant. That's what you put in your armpit so that you smell nice during the day. <laughs> they have things like shampoo. They will have things like... Um, yeah, just things that you might need uh, around the house. Um, so again, I think I just went into the health and beauty section by accident. Household items would be things like laundry detergent, bleach, um, dishwasher soap or dishwashing soap, dishwasher detergent. Sorry, I made a mistake there. And then usually in the same aisle, but on the other side in some stores, most stores, they'll have the health and beauty section. So the health and beauty section is where you can buy things like shampoo, soap, deodorant. Again, I'm not going to do the action of me putting deodorant on, but the health and beauty section, you can sometimes buy. Uh, they might have a little bit of makeup. Um, and I see someone in the chat saying, what is the most popular beer in Canada? Either Labatt's Blue or Molson Canadian, although I don't like either of them. But those are probably the two most popular beers in Canada. Um, let's see here. Uh, Brent says we call it soda here where my wife Jamie is from. It's Coke. She is from the American South. Yeah. So 
yeah, if you want to drink a carbonated beverage and you are in an English speaking country, you should ask what they call it before you ask for one. Um, lots of different kinds of names. Um, hey folks, let me make a change here for a sec. I'm going to go to my chat settings uh, and I am going to change the chat to members only. So we are now in members only chat mode. So if you are a member of the channel, first of all, thank you so much for clicking that join button at some point in your life and supporting what I do here. Uh, your support of my channel allows me to do things like get the equipment I needed to bring uh, Sean in for a live stream this morning. Um, it has allowed me to have better internet so that I can do this from home. So thank you so much for those who support the channel. Panthera Nori says, I got. I just got to go. Bye, guys. Bye, Panther and Nori. I know you got to head off to work usually, right? Uh, hopefully see you soon again. Have a great class. Thank you very much. I hope you have a good day wherever you are heading off to. Um, I am, of course, going to continue with the questions. Okay, so um, if I don't see a question in the chat, I will take a question uh, from the general public. And Javez Marina says, how much does tomatoes here, let me give you the, here's how you would ask it. How much do tomatoes cost in Canada? Well, it depends on the time of year. So right now, tomatoes are starting to become cheaper because we can grow them outside. So in about a week or two, tomatoes will be fairly cheap. About a dollar for a tomato, maybe 50 cents for a tomato. In the winter, you can pay as much as $2 for a tomato. So the price kind of goes up and down. Hey, I want to thank Ashir for becoming a member. Thank you so much, Ashir, for joining the channel. And I want to jump back and say that Brent says in Alabama, they'll ask, what kind of Coke do you want? And you can say, I'll have Sprite. <laughs> that always makes me laugh. Lolly says, um, is there any beer made locally in Canada? Merci. So we have, Lolly, something called craft brewing. So there are a lot of really small breweries in Canada, and I think all over North America. And... It's a brewery that just makes a limited amount of beer every year, and we call it a craft brewery. Um, so around my area, there are a number of craft breweries where you can buy um, kind of specialized beers, and they taste pretty good. Tony Tang says, hi. Hi, Tony. Uh, Madi says, hi, Bob. Is it easy to find organic honey? No. That is one thing that can be a challenge to find because organic honey um, needs to be made from... Um, bees who do not have access to inorganic crops so organic honey is a challenge to find for sure luciano says i will go to the supermarket today well i hope you have a good trip <laughs> i hope you get everything that you need from the supermarket um let me see here um anna says this isn't about groceries but anna hi bob your voice seems a little bit different are you under the weather hope all is well thank you i'm feeling fine but I feel like I have a little bit of um, a sore throat from allergies. I went for a walk yesterday and my throat felt scratchy when I got back. So allergies are when your body reacts to different plants and pollens in the air. So you might be hearing that just a little bit. I'll have a little sip of water. That might help me a bit. Um, let's see here. Um, merci, Bob. Uh, Sean says... Um, Moosehead beer is made right here in the city I live in. I found Moosehead beer in South Korea before. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah, so even as you travel through Canada, there will be different beers in different areas that you can buy. If you go to the East Coast, uh, where Sean lives, um, you can buy different local beers. And if you go to the West Coast, they have different beers again. Um, Vladimir says, hello, everyone. Hi, Vladimir. Um, Let's see here. Brent says, craft breweries are very popular, not far from me in Portland, Maine. Yes, it is a growing industry. Um, I think millennials like craft beer. They like everything to be extra hip and cool. They're not hipsters, though. You can look that word up. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Moosehead beer was my dad's favorite beer, says Brent. Very cool. Um, actually, you know, Brent and Sean live relatively close to each other in North American standards. <laughs> they are both uh, on the east coast of their countries. I'm sure it's a bit of a drive between each of their places, but um, when you live in a place like Canada and the United States where things are big, um, people who live hours from each other, you can describe as being relatively close to each other, relative to me at least. Uh, let me see here. Um, hi, dear teacher, do you have 
Ocean stores in Canada. I'm not sure what those are, Julia. I will have to look that up. Um, let's see here. Uh, Sean's talking about his dad's favorite beer. Um, my dad didn't drink beer. Uh, it's interesting. My dad did not like alcohol in the house at all. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, Ebert says, Ebert Castillo. Hi, teacher Bob. What kind of vegetables do you usually buy? We eat cucumbers, carrots, green and red peppers, romaine, lettuce, chickpeas. Those aren't really a vegetable. They're more of a lentil chickpea. Um, and let's see, uh, did I say carrots? I did. Red and green peppers. Yes. Um, yeah. And I eat bananas. I think I've mentioned that a million times during my live stream. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to skip a few questions. People are chatting. Awesome. Dear teacher, says Alexander, they say that small talk are typical in stores in the U.S. Is it true? Yes. I often talk to the person in front of me or behind me in the checkout line. And we'll talk about checkouts in a minute. Um, although with COVID restrictions, people talk less at the grocery store. But I had a friend visit from another country. And that friend was surprised how often I greeted people and talked to people who I didn't know. He was often saying, did you know that person? And I would say, no. I, I mean, it's just polite to just say, good morning. How are you? Whoa, it's really raining out there today. Yeah, it's really coming down. That's when you're at the grocery store, when there's no COVID-19 and you're in the checkout line, you may have a conversation with a stranger. It just happens sometimes. Um, let's see here. I'm losing track of the questions. Norma, hi, Bob. Did grocery prices go up during this pandemic? They went up a bit. And I think there was less stuff on sale during the pandemic. Uh, Sean's mentioning that his live stream will be after this one. We're not sure the exact time, but it uh, will probably be 10 to 30 minutes after this one. Uh, let's see here. Um, Brent thinks he lives about three hours from Sean. Yeah, so that's about that's relatively close in North American standards. Um, hey teacher, what is the most common food item in Canada? Probably bread. Um, there's things called the staples. Um, for me, if I think of the staples, those are the most important foods. It's bread, eggs, milk, uh, maybe butter like uh, or margarine. Um, but yeah, bread is probably the most popular food to buy at the grocery store. Um, I wanna say hi to the 516 people watching. Thank you so much. Don't forget to click that subscribe button over there if you are not a subscriber and if everyone gives me a thumbs up i appreciate that as well um let me hear see here uh, sultan says the tomato is expensive there what about other vegetables it depends if we can grow them here or not so in ontario we can grow carrots so carrots are usually really cheap in the summer in ontario we can grow onions so onions are usually really cheap in the summer so if we can grow it locally it's usually a lot cheaper um, let's see here. Um, awesome. Thank you to all of the members. I am going to switch chat back. I know I'm short changing you guys a little bit this morning. Usually we go over 10 minutes. Um, when you short change someone, you give them less than what they were expecting. Um, but I feel like I need to keep moving along here. Let me just see where I am in. Yes, let's keep moving along. Let's get back to the lesson. So we are at health and beauty. Again, thank you to all of those of you who are members of the channel. Get your name in green. Get a little crown that you get to wear in the chat. Um, and more importantly, I think you just realize that you are helping me do a better job of this. So thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. Um, let's see here. Some grocery stores will have a hot food counter. You might say they have a restaurant built in. Um, some, I've heard it referred to as the cafeteria section, um, but I generally call it the hot food counter. Um, thanks to uh, Yvonne Flores for becoming a member. Thank you very much for joining the channel. Um, this is a place where they have food ready to eat. So you can sometimes buy a slice of pizza at a hot food counter in a grocery store. You can get a cup of coffee. Some of them have like baked goods like donuts as well beside the actual hot food. Sometimes you can buy a hamburger at a grocery store, French fries at a grocery store. Um, it, this became a lot more popular about 20 years ago. Um, I started to see hot food counters. You can buy chicken wings or chicken strips. If you like KFC, a lot of grocery stores have deep fried chicken, which is similar to KFC, um, but doesn't, doesn't quite taste the same. Um, I'm not sponsored by KFC, but if they wanted to sponsor me, that'd be great. <laughs> um, 
what do you call a person who works at a grocery store? Well, honestly, I just call them a worker. So obviously the person who works uh, at the cash register is called a cashier. Um, but oftentimes if I'm in a grocery store, I'll look for a grocery store worker or I'll look for a worker if I need to ask a question. There are names for the jobs at the grocery store. You could be a stock boy. Not sure why we have the word boy at the end or a stalker. Not the creepy kind though. That's a person who puts food back on the shelves at night. Um, you might be the manager. You might be the cashier. Um, but generally, I just call them the workers. Like, did you see, a, have you seen a worker around? I have a question. And the questions you might ask are questions like, in which aisle can I find milk? In which aisle can I find spaghetti sauce? Or where can I find spaghetti sauce? Where can I find Oreo cookies, if you like Oreo cookies? So those are the typical questions you might ask when you are in a grocery store. Um, and then when you get to the end, let me make this a bit bigger. Uh, you get to the checkout. I don't think this is a grocery store. Well, maybe it, it might be more like a Costco, but it certainly is the checkout area. Um, when you get to the checkout, you will need to wait in line. Right now, you need to wait two meters away from the person in front of you uh, because we are still under social distancing guidelines. Um, but yes, it, when you are all done, you will go to the checkout. Um, and let me get to the next slide and then I will do a few more questions. And the person who you pay is called a cashier. Um, so you will put all of your items on the belt. The belt is the thing that moves at the checkout. Uh, and then they will, this is how I describe it, they will beep all your items, okay? Every item has a barcode on it and they'll go beep, beep, beep. And that will let the computer record what you have purchased. Um, and then you are done shopping. Uh, there is another kind of checkout though called self-checkout. These are becoming more and more popular here in Canada. Um, almost every store um, has a self-checkout. If it's big enough, it's the bigger stores have self-checkout where you can do the checkout yourself, where you get to beep all your own items. You can see in this picture though, there's actually a store worker there because not everyone knows how to run the self-checkout and some people do have problems and they need assistance. So if you were doing self-checkout and had a question, you would just say, um, oh, excuse me, could you help me a minute? And then the store worker would come over and they would help you. Um, I'm gonna do a few more questions. Let me check my time here. Yes, I'm not getting a lot of questions answered today, um, but sorry, that's just, you guys are aware that I'd never answer all the questions, right? It's just too hard to get through all of them. Uh, Dimitri says, hello, Bob. What's the difference between the words buy, purchase, and acquire? So the word acquire is very formal. Like I'm going to acquire um, a new computer next week. It's that we don't use the word very often, but it does mean to buy or purchase. You know, I'm going to acquire a new computer. Um, instead, we would probably say um, next week I'm going to buy a computer or I'm thinking of purchasing a new computer. Next week, I'm going to purchase a new computer. Those would be very common ways to describe that you're going to buy something. Uh, next question is from Eduardo. Good morning, Bob. Is every food called groceries or things like candies, drinks, we need to call something else? So I changed your question a bit there just so it made a bit more sense. Um, I would say everything is called groceries for the most part, although snacks like candies and chocolate you might just call snacks or or a little treat if you're buying them for the kids you might say oh i'm just going to buy them a little treat today so generally groceries would be things like um, your fruits and vegetables your bread your milk your flour your sugar um, even things like cookies in a box we would consider groceries um, but if it's just something that you're buying quick to eat, you would probably refer to it as a snack. Although in general, if it's in a grocery store and it is food, you could call it groceries for sure. Let's see here. Um, Renata, can fruit go plural? Sometimes I see it plural, pluralized. Sometimes I see it being used in the singular, but meaning multiple things, thank you. So fruits, we often say you need to eat your fruits and vegetables. So we use the plural form there. But in the grocery store, we say that there are there's a lot of fruit in the fruit section and a lot of vegetables in the vegetable section. So see how I changed it there? So I don't know the exact reason why sometimes we say fruit and sometimes we say fruits, um, but 
Yes. Yeah. I'm, that's a great question. Actually, Renata, I, I don't know the answer, but I will stick with my example. There are, is a lot of fruit in the fruit section. There are a lot of vegetables in the vegetable section. Weird. English is weird. Eh? It's a weird language. Um, so the next question is not about fruits and vegetables or groceries. So I'm going to skip it. Sorry about that. Um, Oh, this one is not, but I will answer it anyway. So, Brahim Aksase. Hi from Morocco. Hi, Teacher Bob. What about the winner of the competition that you scheduled last month? Thanks for responding. Well, there were three winners, and I announced them on my community page. Um, the third place winner was someone named Natalia from Moscow. The second place winner was someone named Rashka from India. Um, and the first place winner was actually Rod, who I think was in the chat earlier. Oh, he still is. He just said bye to Dave the Canadian. So Rod is in the chat. Rod won first place. Um, and we meet every Friday. We've actually met for two weeks now. Um, and uh, it's going well. So four more weeks of lessons for them. Thanks, Brahim, for following up on that and asking about it. Uh, let's see here. Um, next question is from Park from Beijing. Hello, Bob. How are you doing? My question is, how often do you do your grocery shopping? Um, once a week and then usually once in between. <laughs> When there was no COVID, we went to the grocery store once or twice a week. Right now, we go to the grocery store once a week and we get everything we need for the week and we shop very quickly um, and then that's it and we're done. Um, so um, when, when there was no COVID, I would go to the grocery store after work, sometimes once or twice a week, just to pick up a few things. If we were out of milk, if we were out of cereal, if we were out of bread, Sometimes Jen and I would go to the grocery store together on the weekend, but then I would go again by myself after work. So right now we don't do that, but that's generally how we did our groceries. Well, let's see here. Um, we says, good morning, teacher Bob. What is the difference between groceries and convenience stores? Thank you so much and have a good day. So in my local town, there is a convenience store. No T, it ends in CE, a convenience store. You can buy groceries at a convenience store if you want, but it is very, very expensive, okay? So the whole idea of a convenience store is that it is open more than the grocery store. So that's changed a bit now because most of our grocery stores are open 24 hours um, or longer hours than normal. But it used to be that at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night, the only place you could buy bread was at the convenience store. So you would buy bread, but you would pay more. Um, milk at the convenience store is usually one or $2 more than it is in the grocery store. So you can buy groceries at a convenience store. Most of them, they have less variety at the convenience store, but you definitely can buy um, groceries there. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if this is the word you're thinking of. I know Panthera's left, but um, I think you're thinking of the word BOGO. So, hi, Teacher Bob. Do you use the word BOGO? I use the word BOGO in Canada. Buy one, get one for free. So, buy one, get one. B-O-G-O. -O. We use the word BOGO sometimes in English. Um, let me jump back to the slides. Let me jump back to the lesson. We talked about the self-checkout. We also have the express checkout. So, if you have 10 items or less or 12 items or less, you'll want to read the sign. Um, you can use the express checkout. So the express checkout um, is a place where if you are in a hurry and you aren't buying like a ton of groceries, you can go to the express checkout and then very quickly the cashier will ring you through or will uh, ring in your items. There's a lot of different words for that action uh, and then you will be on your way a lot more quickly. You will probably pay using a card machine, using either a debit card, a credit card, an Interact card, they have different names in different parts of North America, or you might pay cash. That's still quite common as well. Um, you might have a rewards card like Air Miles or Aeroplan. There's a lot of different words for this where you collect points. So I have an Air Miles card. Whenever I buy groceries, they scan my Air Miles card and I get some reward points, and then I can spend those points later on food when I have enough points. When you're all done, you'll get the receipt. Let me make this one bigger. This person bought zucchini, bananas, potatoes, broccoli, Brussels sprout, sprouts, <laughs> uh, grapes, peas, and tomatoes. So look at that. So now we can check tomatoes, 
It was $2.99 for tomatoes. Oh, and they bought some iceberg lettuce as well. Um, so when you're done, you'll get a receipt. Many people don't keep their receipt, but they will give you a small piece of paper indicating everything that you have purchased. Um, the person at the end of the um, checkout um, is called a bagger. Not every store has a bagger, but a bagger is a person who puts your things in a grocery bag for you. Um, some stores have baggers. Some stores you need to bag yourself. I go to a store where there is no bagger. So I put things in my bags myself. Um, you can use plastic bags still in Canada, but they do cost five cents each. Um, and it's frowned upon. I was going to teach this word in a lesson later next, next week. In English, when you say something is frowned upon, it means that uh, you don't like it when you do it. not very good oh and then now it just unfroze so I'm not sure if you'll see that on the live stream um, but my computer froze for a little bit and then it unfroze so I'm not sure exactly what's happening let me just double check something here yes on the screen I'm frozen don't worry I will come back in a moment I think it will unfreeze um, and then let me just check well I think I'm going again Oh yeah, let's just keep going. Um, you can also use reusable bags. So reusable bags are um, very handy because you take them to the store empty. Uh, and then when you come back home, you can just take your things out. And then the next time you go to the store, you use them again. When you go out of the grocery store, you load your groceries into your vehicle. Okay, so the action of putting things in your vehicle. Uh, thanks. Uh, Nathan GR says, you're okay now. So yes, uh, things froze for just a moment. I'm not sure why, but we seem to be back again. So hopefully we can finish the lesson. Um, you load your groceries in your vehicle um, and you bring your cart back to the cart return or the cart corral. Um, but this is something some people don't do. They just leave their grocery cart out in the parking lot and they hope that someone else will clean it up for them. So you should always bring your cart back when you are doing groceries. Um, when you get home, you need to unload the groceries. So at the grocery store, you load the groceries into your car. You can also say you put the groceries into your car. Um, you load the groceries, you put the groceries in your car. When you get home, you unload the groceries. So in this picture that I found, all the kids are helping unload the groceries. Um, that usually happens in my house. Um, the kids are usually excited because they want to know uh, what I bought. <laughs> so they're happy to help unload the groceries uh, because they want to see um, what I have purchased. And then uh, when you uh, get into your kitchen, you need to put the groceries away. Um, so you put them in the cupboard, you put groceries in the fridge, you put groceries in the freezer uh, and all those kinds of things. So when you are all done your grocery shopping, uh, the last thing you do is you put your groceries away. Um, I do see someone again asking if I can speak more loudly. I, I find it interesting. I think in different parts of the world, the volume level is different when I'm doing a live stream. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research on that. So um, anyways, uh, let me get back to the questions. I'm going to answer a few questions for a bit. Uh, Sean is gonna pop back in in about two minutes and we're just gonna talk to Sean again for a little bit. Um, but let me uh, just answer a few more questions uh, hopefully the live stream keeps working <laughs> while we're doing it. Uh, let me get to the question. Let's see here. Um, Eagle Fly from East Timor says, is there any specific name for a store which only sells fruit or bread only? If yes, what's the name of that? So there is no specific store for fruit, okay, that we have in Canada. Uh, we do have bakeries that are just a place where they bake and sell things like bread and donuts and muffins and all of those kinds of things. But we don't really have any store that just sells fruit. The closest thing I can think of um, would be either a farmer's market where a farmer sells their fruit or what we call a roadside stand where a farm will have a small stand by the road where they sell their fruits as well. So thanks Lolly and Julia for saying the volume is okay. Um, that makes me feel better. Um, but yes, I'm still curious as to why um, sometimes the volume isn't good for some people in some parts of the world. Uh, next question is from 
T. Charlottesov, is food and goods that you buy in Canada expensive? I would say relatively expensive. Um, people in Canada get paid fairly well at their job. See, I didn't know whether I should use good or well there. Um, if you have a job in Canada, you usually make decent money. Um, but for people who make minimum wage, so in my part of Canada, minimum wage is $15 per hour. For people who make minimum wage, groceries do seem expensive. If you make more than minimum wage groceries, I would say are somewhat expensive, but reasonable. I, I don't complain too much. We have a lot of variety and a lot of really yummy food in Canada. Hey, I'm going to bring Sean back in just for a sec here. Let me just get my earbud in so I can hear him and let me see if he's ready. I think he's ready. There he is. I might have surprised him. <laughs> Hi, Sean. How are you? Pretty good. Hey, Sean, you just want to recap uh, again what you're planning to do after this live stream? Yeah, so after this live stream, we're going to go live on my uh, channel, uh, which is free 99 English. Um, and we're going to play Kahoot. Uh, it's a, a quiz app uh, or website uh, where we can just test you on what you just taught. Um, it's only going to be 11 questions long. Um, yeah, so we're going to be doing that. I don't know if it's going to be 10 or 15 minutes or even 30 minutes afterwards, but because we got to test out... Uh, you know, the video and audio and all yeah. that fun stuff so that it runs smoothly. Um, yeah, it's a great live stream you're having right now. Um, I, I love the part about the produce and the produce uh, <laughs> part because uh, most people here in Atlantic Canada call it produce, produce. but I always I always say produce and I and I, I get in arguments sometimes about it. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I, it's pretty funny. I actually didn't know there was two pronunciations till I was making a video on it and I'm like, realize I had said it one way and then in the next sentence yeah. I said it a different way so it was kind yeah. of weird so uh, <laughs> hey just again Sean's doing a, a little um, quiz game based on this lesson so I sent Sean all my lesson material yesterday and he put together a little Kahoot quiz that's going to be on his channel again that's free 99 English on YouTube uh, and that will be a little bit later after we're done here um, so thanks Sean I'm going to let you go and uh, I'm going to get back to answering a few questions and I'm going to wrap this up so see you Sean yeah. So let me do a few more questions and then we will wrap this up. Um, let's see here. Uh, Avin Klute says, Hey Bob, morning. I just wanted to know if you get also meat. Oh, if you also buy meat when you get groceries. Yes, we do. Um, and how many people are turning to or are becoming vegan in your country? I'm not sure of the exact percentage but it is becoming more and more common for people to choose to not eat meat. Uh, so they become vegetarian or vegan. There's a slight difference between the two uh, choices there, um, but certainly someone who is vegan or vegetarian does not eat meat and it is becoming a lot more popular in Canada uh, for sure. Let's see here. Uh, oh, here's a great question from Michelle. Hi, Bob, how are you doing, Bob? Can you haggle with shopkeepers in the market area in Canada? In my part of Canada, you do not discuss price, okay? When you go to the farmer's market, you pay what it says on the food. When you go to the grocery store, you pay the price that it says. There is very little haggling. Haggling is when you discuss a price. Like if someone wants $5 for strawberries and you say, I'll give you four and they say no, 450. That's haggling when you kind of try to get a price. Um, we do not do that in this part of Canada. Um, and it's not very common in North America um, to haggle. It's only common when you are buying something used. Okay, so if I was selling a used car and I wanted $4,000 for it, you might offer me $3,000 and we might agree on $3,500. But when you go to the grocery store or a shop, when you are buying something that has a price tag on it, you always pay the price. There is no, no discussion. You might at a farmer's market be able to haggle a bit, but it, I, we sell flowers at a farmer's market. We, we don't. So um, it's not as common as it is in some parts of the world for sure. Um, hey folks, you know what? I think that that is going to be the last question. So I'm going to wrap this lesson up. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to give a huge shout out again uh, to all of my members, people who have decided to join, click the join button and support my channel. You're awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, big shout out to Sean. Remember, he is doing a live stream in a little bit. 
um, where you can do a little quiz on some of the things that you just learned. A uh, big shout out again to Brent from American English with this guy, helping out answering some of your questions in the chat. And then again, a huge thank you to Todd and Dave uh, for moderating and keeping things civil uh, and kind and gentle. So again, if you are new here, uh, and you are not subscribed, click the subscribe button. Thumbs up are always welcome. And don't forget, there is another live lesson tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, open question and answer uh, lesson where you can ask me anything you want. Anyways, uh, Bob the Canadian here signing out, saying bye, have a good day. Um, sorry there was a little glitch in the lesson and sorry that some of you couldn't hear me too well, um, but there will be a short version of this lesson with all of the user viewer questions taken out. Uh, and I'll probably put that up at l later today, probably in 12 hours or maybe 